Please pray with me. Lord God, Heavenly Father, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, for you are our rock and our salvation. Amen. This is, this is an important gospel text today, for there's a transition that is happening here in the Gospel of Matthew. To understand this, I'm going to go back a few verses in this Gospel. I'm going back to verse 10 to 20, right before today's reading. Listen to these words. And he called the people to him and said to them, Hear and understand. It is not what goes into the mouth that defiles a person, but what comes out of the mouth. This defiles a person. Then the disciples came and said to him, Do you not know that the Pharisees were offended when they heard this saying? He answered, Every plant that my fa heavenly Father has not planted will be rooted up. Let them alone. They are blind guides. And if blind lead the blind, both will fall into a pit. But Peter said to him, Explain to us this parable. And he said, are you also still without understanding? Do you not see that whatever goes into the mouth passes through the stomach and is expelled? But what comes out of the mouth proceeds from the heart, and this defiles a person. For out of the heart come evil thoughts, murder, adultery, sexual immorality, theft, false witness, slander. These are what defile a person. But to eat with unwashed hands does not defile anyone. Where is Jesus going? I want you to hear this because it's important to understand where Jesus is going as Matthew presents it in this text. There is a shift happening here that is such an important shift that it affects you and me. The shift that's happening in here is the understanding that selectiveness has nothing to do with who we are. It's not that we're selective because we have a certain place we were born. It's not we're selective because we were born, quote, on the wrong side or the right side of the railroad tax tracks. It makes no difference as to where we come from or anything else. It makes no difference to what our our sex is, it makes no difference to what color we are, it makes no difference at all to understand that what Jesus is saying here is we're all the same. For out of the heart, and from out of the heart according to Matthew, is basic our basic sinful nature all across the board. Now the Pharisees and then at that time with the Jews and the whole perception of the Messiah, remember, was that the Messiah came to his people and he was going to save his people. But there's a shift coming here. As I said to you, it was a shift that, I, that is so important for you and for me, we have to hear it again. And that's why this whole encounter with this Canaanite woman is so important. Sometimes we get hung up on what Jesus says in this text, and sometimes we're a little, oh, I can't believe just Jesus said something about feeding things to the dogs, and maybe he called this woman a dog, and what's going on with us, Jesus? But you have to understand the whole context of what is happening. It's me. Understand that Jesus is making, there's a direction changing here, that Jesus is going to now respond to someone who is considered out here. The Canaanites and the Jews, oh my goodness gracious, talk about what I like to call the Hatfields and the McCoys or whatever phrase you want to use. And the Canaanites did not have good standing among the Jewish people, and they were not 
considered much. And they were really enemies. I mean enemies. And here comes this Canaanite woman. And it isn't interesting what happens in today's text. She comes to Jesus not for herself. She comes to Jesus for her daughter. But did you pay attention to what she said when she came to Jesus? Let me read it again. She says, Have mercy on me, O Lord, son of David. My daughter is severely oppressed by a demon. She's an outsider. She has no connection with her any Jewish roots. She has no connection to have any, even any understanding of what the Messiah is to be, probably. She's probably heard the stories. And she comes to Jesus and she says to him, have mercy on me, O son of David. Ah, a recognition. For my daughter is possessed by a demon. Now let's put him on pause for a second. By the way, that was about 30 seconds of how to deal with it. Do you think I forgot my sermon? Because I, what I want to deal with in this text, not only is this whole thing of this change, this whole concept that, this, that Jesus is now moving toward those who are not of the Jewish tradition, but I also want you to deal with something in this text that most of us have more difficulty with than that, and that is Jesus' silence to this woman. Did you listen carefully as I read it to you before? She comes to him and says, my, you know, my daughter is severely oppressed by a demon, but the text is really clear. It says, but he did not answer her a word. Whoa. Every question and they don't answer you? Silence. We have a hard time. Silence. Some of us do. I remember when I was growing up, and I was one of those students back in the dark ages. That only could not only have my books in front of me, but have music playing in the room. And my mother and father could never understand how I could study with all that noise going on. How many of you, when you drive, have a radio on in your car? Huh? Do any of you drive with no radio on? Well, my wife, of course. <laughs> you, you play books, though. You play books. There's a something there always going on. Most of us have a hard time with silence. And when someone does not answer us right away, what goes through our minds? They didn't hear me. That could be a good one. But Jesus was standing. She was yelling at him, so it kind of, that couldn't have fit. What else? Are they mad at me? What? He didn't have anything to tell her. It's kind of interesting what happens in this text. This silence time of Jesus. And you notice he doesn't answer her a word. And how does the text go on to say... She, the disciples get into this. Do you ever have one of these situations? He doesn't answer a word and the disciples come and say, let's get her out of here. You know, that's a simple way of dealing with this situation for the disciples. First of all, remember what I said to you earlier. 
She's a Canaanite. She's bothering Jesus. She asks him a question. He doesn't answer her. So since he didn't ask the question, the disciples are going to make sure they handle this very well. Let's get rid of her. Hmm. I want you to deal with all this because I want you to hear all this because I want you to hear what this says sometimes for me about the silence of God. It's a hard thing for us. When we sometimes say, Jesus doesn't hear my prayers, he doesn't answer me. What do you think? He can't hear? Maybe I need to yell a little louder. She does, by the way. Did you ever have that kind of situation? Did you ever have the situation where you pray for something and the answer doesn't seem to come right away and you, and, and you struggle with it and you ask somebody, a good friend of yours, oh, I don't understand it, and they say, oh, Jesus doesn't hear you. Or maybe that's not what he wants for you. Or they will come up with every answer you can think of. The disciples did. Yeah, their easy one was let's get, get the situation. Get, we don't have to handle this. Send her away. I hope you begin to see what's happening here. The struggle that is going on with the silence of God. And it's for every one of us. I just was sitting over here a few minutes ago. And I looked at my watch and realized this is the 16th of September. And I realized also that it was around March the 16th that everything seemed to... Uh, Five months ago. Have any of you wondered where the silence of God is in all this? Have you been praying to him about it? Has he answered? Ah, the silence of God. But did you pay attention to the text as it goes on? The woman comes closer to him and she says, Lord, have mercy on me. And then Jesus makes this statement, which it seems so out of, the, out of the realm, but I want you to hear the statement by what I was just trying to say to you earlier in the text. When he says this statement about taking stuff and throwing it to the dogs, there's a concept here. There's a concept here that the, fresh, the real food was only supposed to be able to come to the children of Israel. But Jesus, is, through Matthew here, is making a transition. This food, this promise of the Savior, the Messiah, who came into the world to save his people, was not only just for his select few, but for everyone. And this woman, in spite of her struggles, in spite of what is happening to her, and we wonder what's going through her mind, and we're wondering what's going through the mind of all those disciples who are listening to it, says this interesting thing. Even the food crumbs from the table feed the dog. Something that seems so insignificant. Begin to get the picture of what's happening now. There is a movement here. Jesus is going to respond to her, but he responds to her because she believes. She believes he is the Messiah. Even though she's an outsider, even though she's not supposed to believe in him, even though she belongs to the wrong group and everything else, she believes, and because she believes, he responds. Be with it, old woman, your faith is strong. Let it be done as you ask. Interesting, isn't it? 
it's then that we hear those powerful words again. Be what done for you as you desire. Something's missing in the text though. Heals the daughter. It's the woman's faith in Jesus that brings the healing to the daughter. He doesn't have to be physically present to do it. Matthew makes it clear for us. Then he says, and her daughter was healed instantly. Beginning to see what's happening here for you and for me. Not only dealing with the silence of God, but the presence of God in our lives and what this means in times like this. How it challenges us to continue to say, Lord, have mercy. This is our issue. And know that even in the silence, he hears. He knows, and he responds, maybe even with the crumbs. You know, sometimes I'm beginning to think about this whole thing with the pandemic, and sometimes I'm beginning to think about the aspect, you know, I think most of us would like one of those zap kind of things from God. Okay, zap, it's all gone, and it's all away, and it's all over with. Now back to normal. But I'm also beginning to think of this text. I'm thinking about the crumbs that fall from the table. And maybe that's what the challenge is for us, to pick up the crumbs and to know how to live. Maybe it's the adjustments we have to make. We don't know. Maybe it is sitting in a sanctuary where it is a challenge, by the way, I want to tell you, seeing somebody here and over here and over here and over here. But maybe that's it. But in it all, God hears and God works. And God says, be healed as you desired. Wow. There's a major shift here for you and for me about God's love and mercy in the world that we live in even today. So hear him, even in his silence. Lord, have mercy. Be healed, for I am with you always. Amen. Now may the peace of God, which passes all human understanding, Keep our hearts and our minds in Christ Jesus now and forevermore. And all God's people say,